what's up everybody my name is Graham and welcome to my YouTube channel uh, today we're talking about Amazon's book of the year and Goodreads best fiction book of 2023 Yellowface by RF Kuang um, I'm excited for this book because I am actually a really big fan of RF Kuang uh, in fact I have right here I don't know if you can see it but we'll put it right there um, I have a poppy flower tattooed uh, on my arm because of the Poppy War trilogy that she wrote. Um, it was one of my favorites and influential of the time when I first started reading. And so I thought it'd be a big part to put that onto my arm uh, as a tattoo because I want to get books that I like on my arm as kind of like my top list for myself to share with people. Um, all that being said, uh, this week's review is going to be spoiler free. So like last week's, it's uh, I'm going to still have it segmented out because I do think that Yellowface has a lot of deep discussions to be had, right? There's a reason it was the top book of 2023 for a reason uh, for a lot of different things. And it's because it dives deep into the publishing world. And so I wanted to be able to talk about that and have that sectioned out for you. But there's no real spoilers that are gonna be shared with you that aren't already like out there for people to know about this book. So those who don't know the basic story of this book, um, it is a satirical fiction following two authors, one by the name of Athena Liu, and, who is a famous Chinese American author. And the other is June Hayward, who is a not so famous white American author. Uh, these two went to the same college and are frenemies. Uh, so they like being around each other, but secretly, uh, especially from June's perspective, they hate each other. The best way to explain is uh, June is jealous over Athena's work. And so I think she wants to stay around uh, that quite a bit. Uh, in the first chapter, June and Athena start hanging out. And so they go and drink to the success of Athena's new work to be finished. And they go back to Athena's apartment and continue to have fun together, um, which leads to Athena showing off a manuscript that she just wrote about uh, ch Chinese labor camps in World War I that she's never showed anyone else. And so June is able to take a quick glance at that and be excited for Athena. And then suddenly uh, it's 3 a.m. and they decide to have a pancake eating contest as one would do right we would all decide to eat pancakes at 3 a.m and athena just chokes she doesn't decide she chokes on the pancakes and dies in front of june and so june calls the uh, ambulance um, just watched her frenemy die in front of her eyes june watches the death steals that manuscript and that leads to the whole story because june decides i'm going to use this manuscript as my own and get published and famous because it was awesome. That's the first chapter. The rest is the repercussions and what it's like to go through the publication company. And there's a lot going on. I like that basic synopsis of the book. That was what I learned about it. And so I was like, that's going to be really interesting. That's why it's a good title. Yellowface. She's pretending to be uh, Chinese American, essentially, or she's writing about these topics that are hard. What I love about this book, first of all, to kind of get into our mindset of like the writing style of this is this is so much different from R.F. Kuang's other works. Um, we have Poppy War, which was very fantasy um, and very well written and about China in like World War II while in a fantasy novel, essentially. And then we had Babel, which was very like Oxford and like college and students and learning about translation, which uh, was very like, you had to really chew through those words. This was more simple and lighthearted and there's an interview with R.F. Kuang, I'll pop somewhere, uh, where with this book's release, she explains that this is her gremlin mode pandemic novel. But what was interesting is that people were actually worried about this book, that it wouldn't be published because it does indeed dig at the publishing company quite a bit. And so people uh, with her company were, or her agent was a little bit worried that Harper would be offended, but Harper ended up being able to publish it in a different way. It's Harper Collins like a smaller part of their company, um, but it's it's kind of like an off brand, so it doesn't quite look like Harper, which I think was definitely done on purpose. Um, but first thing I noticed right off the bat, how much control publishers have over your manuscript. June has the manuscript and 
sends it in after doing some changes. And then the publisher, it was really cool because in the story, it showed a lot of the back and forth between editors and the publication with the author. And so they make a deal on how much success they feel that your book's going to be. So if it's really good, they'll pay you in advance. And it talked about being able to make a certain amount of money in advance. And then after that advance gets made, you end up getting more money afterwards. Um, and then uh, that's just based off how they feel how big of a success your book will be. They also edit and censor and control a lot of the narrative for the authors according to this as well. What I mean by that is there were like some lines that were very deeply meaningful to Athena that was written and also ended up being meaningful to June. Like June is a terrible person, but she's not. Uh, June's a terrible person, like really bad, uh, but she's not. There's some writings in here that make her seem like she also cared about certain topics. And so there was like a part where the editor's like, I don't think this needs to be in here. And it's because June just wants to get famous is like, yeah, sounds great. But it also takes away a huge part of the story. And so they edit and censor quite a few things um, and kind of affect kind of what the story being told is just so that the general public will know. And that's their job is to really tell us the public or they have a pulse on the public of what they'll enjoy to make sure it's uh you know uh edible for everybody to digest uh and like um but you can also as an author have some leeway of what you want to write too and so that was interesting the really fascinating part about this was because june is a white american author and not chinese it was interesting that the topic was about uh, Chinese immigrant camps in World War I, uh, where there was, of course, racism involved and hard hardships for the Chinese there. Um, and so the publishing co uh, company decided to create a narrative about June. So June's name uh, is June Hayward, but her June was short for Juniper, and her middle name was Song. And so they decided to change her name to Juniper Song, which is more hard to know, like, oh, is that a white person, essentially? And then when she got her headshots, she also, an angle just right, that made her look more like, oh, is that a white person? I don't know. And so uh, it's interesting, she, she was very ambiguous on who she was and the editing and publishing team did that on purpose. And so I thought that was really, really interesting um, to be able to tell a narrative and also be able to be like, oh, June's allowed to write this story. The whole topic is like, is it okay for any race to really uh, discuss about other races in their story and I think that overall like if we weren't able to add diversity in books as writers as people who write um, it would create the story to be pretty bland where it's like okay like here's this so it's really cool for authors to be able to I right, have this side character or this character or this main character that is a different culture that I'm learning about that's really cool so I think this book talks a lot about like the right and wrong ways to do it obviously everything that June was doing in this book was terrible and illegal and plagiarizing and everything so it was interesting if you go back to that barnes and nobles uh video rf kwong really does discuss more on those lines i'm gonna let her talk more on that portion of like who can write and what but she does say something very fascinating it says does race pigeonhole us to only write about that race right and so it kind of talks about that a little bit with athena lu's perspective because she was chinese american and she they had an expectation of her writing about those things. It almost felt like she was just only allowed to be in that lane and write about that because it was her heritage. And that could also be detrimental to the their work as well. So that was a really interesting uh, conversation to think about. And I thought that was a really great topic. So the next thing that this book or the next topic that this book nails really well is about book culture or just our culture in general on social media. Uh, June gets this book published. No one knows she actually didn't write it. And then someone decides on the internet to make a crazy guess that it was in fact Athena who wrote the manuscript and book. And so uh, in this scenario, they come out and make accusations towards June that are actually true. However, June doesn't want that to be true. And so she acts like that didn't happen. Okay, that's just a small portion. I feel like it's not too spoiler. So it's interesting, though, because our culture is filled with that as well. Uh, cancel culture. Uh, in, the, in the premise of this book, we're going to definitely say June's in the wrong all the way, 100%. However, it had a very interesting discussion about 
people moving fast and quick and causing a lot of stress and depression in certain other authors or anyone in the arts for that matter. And so uh, they make crazy accusations uh, with no proof whatsoever uh, towards a person. And then you got to watch the stress happen uh, to June in the story. And I feel like that's a huge part of our culture today. Uh, if somebody says, I don't like this because of X and I really dissect it and I feel like this person uh, has some misogyny or racism or uh, X or whatever else is in this book, um, a lot of people will be like, yeah, internet voice, I want to jump on that and, and join that. And that's just our society today. It's huge on the internet uh, through Twitter and everything. And what was really, really crazy was the things that RF Kuang wrote about this book and like the topics that were in there it's interesting to see uh people on the internet talking about a book so right now i'm doing a review of this book and talking about it and dissecting it and it's talked about inside the book there's other people that are like well our kwang wrote this and uh she came uh yes she is a great writer and all this stuff but x and y and uh she actually went to this school and there's all this and it kind of almost feels like they want to discredit someone for the work they did. And that's fascinating too. You, it's talked about in the book. And so it's like you're as an author, as you go through publishing, you all of a sudden have this like microscope on you. If it's a success of good and bad, you'll have people giving rave reviews and you have people dissecting everything that you wrote in this book and then determining what type of person you are afterwards to try to get you canceled and that's a huge part of the story which is interesting um again june deserves to be canceled 100 uh, percent it's just fascinating on how the parallels are in that space for me personally like i have twitter but i'm not very cool enough to utilize it correctly like i don't really get to join those bandwagons uh so i never really feel anything important i'm going to say is going to really do anything right um because it's just i feel like that space is just a place to you're like I have this opinion about this and I feel strongly about it and I feel strong about things but nothing like that's gonna go point out someone's whatever but it's so fascinating to just like see that happen in real life and see the parallels in the story um I really have to say if someone came to me and asked like hey give me a book that defines your culture on the internet or like modern day society as a whole there's two books that come to mind and first off it'll be yellow face by rf kuang because of that discussion of uh how we handle fame and uh how the internet functions it's done really really well in this book and then the other book is no one is talking about this by patricia lockwood and so i those are the two books that really discuss twitter and the um, internet culture quite a bit and so i think she did a great job for that and then the other thing is what publishers really care about like after the twitter culture uh what happens is june's getting canceled and then like a bunch of people uh show up from uh, media sources that you don't quite trust in the world um, that you don't quite agree with as a person but they go let's go defend this person because they're being wrongly accused and that spikes numbers even greater um, and because you get support from a group that you normally wouldn't want to get support from and the money rolls in and so the publishing company doesn't care where the money comes from right the, like bad press is good press and we know quite a few people in our world that believe in that and uh want that and you just you'll make more money if you have bad press uh is kind of what the topic was there too and so it was crazy to be able to go through that roller coaster of like oh i'm being dragged oh wait people are coming up to defend me and it's actually making sales greater uh so i get more money and the publishing company gets more money and then we get to topic number three immediately after um hey you're on fire right now you're a top author give us another book right and uh give us something fresh that we could be able to sell because you're a hot commodity making us so much money we want to keep making money and so there's a whole conversation on the pressure from your agent and from the publishing company to write something else um, and it's it's crazy like it's crazy like hey yes you write this and you do that and uh we'll pay you even more money and do all this type of stuff and when your hobby becomes your job there's kind of like a make or break like you go from doing something out of passion of like oh, I'm gonna, these words are pouring out of me and I really enjoy it and all of that 
to all of a sudden becoming uh, more of um, sad. Like, oh, I'm getting this pressure that I don't want and the words aren't coming to me and I have writer's block. Uh, and that's what happens in the story too, you know? And so it's it's a true like emotion that you're following of like, man, how come I can't do this? Um, and in one case, it's like, how come I can't do this without plagiarizing? Uh, but for others, it was a very good take on also like the arts of uh, it becoming an actual job and an expectation of you and how that could affect your flow of writing and, and discovery and how come it doesn't come easy anymore was also super explored. And so I really loved that in this book. Just well done in a story that also just makes you super anxious and full of anxiety. Like the whole time I was just so anxious because like I knew what June was doing was wrong. And but yet there's like, uh, R of Kwong, you have, you have a thing. Like you're like, I'm going to make this like character that is borderline terrible or is terrible. But yet somehow I'm going to make you like him. That's like R of Kwong's like stick. Uh, and so again in Yellowface, I don't like this character, but yet there's a part of me that goes, oh, I feel so bad for you. Um, and so that's, it was interesting. I really liked that uh, to be able to learn about the publishing process in this way uh, and to be able to talk about those like kind of niche topics in a fun uh, way. And so I understand why this book has so much uh, great things. Um, as far as negativity or anything like that, um, there's really nothing for me. Like this book was great. The pros were awesome. It was quick and easy. I read it in a span of just a few hours uh, over a couple days. But like it was a very short read because I just couldn't put it down. It was funny. It was heartbreaking. It was tense. Um, it was great. Um, there wasn't anything that would complain about or anything towards this book. It was great. And so I... Again, I would recommend this if anybody today was like, hey, give me a book about today's modern society. Here you go. Read Yellow Face by Rav Kwong. It's about today's modern society and it's about the publishing company. Like, here you go. Uh, so this is my first, uh, let's go to the rating. This will be my first five stars out of five stars of 2024. Congrats, Rav Kwong. You did it. It was great. I understand now why this was a huge talked about book in 2023. I ended up buying it like the first week it was out because I am an RF Kong fan. I just never got around to reading it until now. And it was just, it was just great. Um, and so guys, I highly recommend reading Yellow Face. Um, what, what are the things that you liked or disliked about this book? Please let me know in the comments uh, below. Again, if you want to be alerted about the next time I want to I'm doing a review, uh, the basis of this channel is I want to be able to do one book review a week because uh, I my goal this year is to read a book a week. And so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment on your favorite part of why you liked or disliked this book because maybe I'm just missing something uh, as well. And uh, yeah, uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Toodles.